Good afternoon. Today, I'm just going to add a few comments on the lightning conductor in reference to the assignment that focuses on the character of Molly Randolph and her qualities as a new woman, which was the label, the definition attached to feminists during this time. Then I'll spend most of the time introducing, commenting on the film, Christine, and we'll have time to watch not only the central part of the film where you see the transformation, the full transformation of the character of Arnie, a transformation that was pre-announced in the last scene from last week with Arnie in the car, no glasses, feeling stronger and very much connected with the car itself. We will also be able to see also some of the evil uh, uh, actions of both Christine and Arnie and the conclusion. This time I'm not demanding that you post anything on Google Docs after you watch the film because I would like instead to have a discussion, so to hear your comments, your reactions. Of course, if you want to write a few notes while you're watching the film so that you will remember what you would like to say afterwards, that's fine. So this is the third and last series of excerpts from the Lightning Conductor accompanied by short comments. I'm not going to go through this entire presentation. I just want to suggest that besides reviewing the actual text that was assigned, the full set of pages taken from this novel, that you review this selection of quotes and direct your attention to the comments that you find in here, because especially in this third set of notes, you are bound to find ideas that will help you develop the topic of the assignment. And again, keep in mind that you don't need to provide a comprehensive treatment of the topic, that a few well-chosen, well-analyzed examples would do, right? And of course, you, you can not only articulate the treatment of the topic of Molly as a new woman, but you can also add some nuances because as you find it suggested in here, at times, inside certain kind of situations, Molly is still also a traditional kind of woman, right? Again, it's not real feminism that you find in the culture of this period. We can call it a proto feminism or a primitive form of feminism. You will also find in this presentation several references to the social norms and boundaries imposed on women during that time and how Molly, through her behavior in the presence of James, Jack, uh, is pushing the edges of those norms. Before we watch the first series of scenes from Christine, I want to talk about the visible similarities within the series of movies that we've watched at this point, from Herbie, The Love Bug, 1968, to Bumblebee, 2018, and this one from 1984. Starting with the fact that at the beginning, towards the beginning of each movie, you find when the car is presented that the car has its own sense of justice. 
of course, as it happens with horror movie, there is clearly a simplification, a simplistic view of what is good or evil in society, in life. And the foundation for the bond that develops at the beginning of each movie between the main character and the car is based on some kind of empathy and also the appreciation by the vehicle, by the technology, for the personality, for the honesty, for the sincerity of the character. Now, of course, uh, I, I can go through the details, right? In, in reference to the first point, we can remember how, you, you can remember how when Jim Douglas first sees Herbie, Herbie is attacked, in a way, by Mr. Thorndike, who's the evil character of this uh, simple fairy tale style movie, and Jim will defend the car. And that's where the empathy is established. And certainly the character of Charlie that is, is not lacking in empathy uh, in her interactions initially and following the beginning of their relationship with B-127 or Bumble. In the case of Arnie, you see from the very beginning when he sees the car, that although the car is a wreck, is, is, is the most terrible barn find one can, can find, uh, he's drawn to the car. He sees something in the car that has value to the point where he would willingly pay more. The old guy asks for 250, which is already too much for that, for that junk of, of a car. And, and, and then Arnie volunteers to pay 300 because he wants to show his admiration for uh, the car. Uh, and through the rest of the film, Arnie gets attached to the car a lot, right? So there is this idea of the seduction of the technology, the temptations that come with the use, the initial use of the technology. Also, in these films and the literature we've seen, there is this idea that there are some signs, some premonitions that the technology is special, is, is alive, is life-changing, right? So, Arnie goes through a change that is physical and psychological, and little by little, his attraction to the car turns into captivation. He becomes captive, he becomes enslaved uh, to the car, and, and by the end of the movie, he's simply the extension of this evil, diabolical piece of machinery, just doing what the car would like to do and helping the car with a vendetta that uh, in some way is fulfilling and satisfying for both. But by the end of the movie, Arnie is less than human. At the beginning of the movie, he is less than cool and uh, mediocre. At the center of the movie is, is the super cool guy of the school with the help of this very cool restored car by the end of the movie. He is nothing at all. He is dead, although Christine will survive and possibly come back. That's where a sequel uh, could be uh, found. The, the element for a sequel, although it's a proper sequel, was never produced. So we know that the car and the user are choosing each other, right? So Arnie is choosing the car and the car reacts to him in kind. Charlie, of course, finds the car and sees the beauty in that old, beat up, uh, dirty uh, Volkswagen Beetle. And Jim Douglas, of course, also sees some value in the car. There is the element on, in, of jealousy uh, showing that this is an emotional or a quasi-real relationship between the technology and the user. So, 
For example, the card shows that is tremendously jealous of Dennis, Arne's best friend, or Dennis' new girlfriend, Lee. Herbie shows jealousy for the red Lamborghini 400 that will be destroyed outside the house of Jim Douglas before Herbie disappears in the foggy night of, foggy night of uh, San Francisco. And Bumblebee, in a scene we didn't have time to watch, is left alone and behaves like a pet. Uh, looking for attention, lacking the attention you would need to give to a pet, he destroys the house. He destroys the, the, the whole front of the house, the kitchen, and the living room. In this movie, as well as in Jules Verne's literature, the car is also a sign of a different kind of time. An apocalyptic messenger, it signals a dramatic change in society. And this is a remnant of this idea that you need to fear technology, that technology may have some attractive, seductive, captivating qualities, but there is a darker side to it, okay? And of course, there is this aspect that the change has some supernatural qualities uh, to it. In all of these movies, there is some kind of spiritual or even physical transformation that happens after the encounter with the car. Uh, we've, we've spoken about the transformation of Arnie and we'll see it uh, completed, including his new, uh, more powerful relationship with his family. At some point, he'll try to choke up his father, to strangle his father. And keep in mind the cultural categories applied to the character. At the beginning, he's classified as a nerd with all the qualities of a nerd, and, and nerds were a typical character of movies from the 1980s, and there were also, there was a subgenre of movies about nerds. He becomes a greaser, 1978, when the modern part of the story takes place after the premise the, from 1957. 1968 was the time when the movie Grease with Olivia Newton-John, who recently died, and John Travolta, uh, played the part of the protagonists. And this prompted uh, a, a, a trend whereby some things from the 1950s, the way you dress, the way you treat your air with gel, became popular again. So from nerd, he becomes a greaser. And, and so keep that in mind. And if you want to know more about that subculture, you can click on that. In terms of transformation, the positive side of this is Charlie, right? Charlie becomes a hero by the end of the movie Bumblebee. She becomes also a confident woman. And Jim Douglas uh, turns into a successful race car driver, but once he realizes that his own victories owe a lot to the skills and the special magical talents of the car, he turns into a more mature individual, which justifies the strengthening of his relationship with Carol, because frankly, at, at the beginning of a movie, he's a masculine dude, by the end of the movie is a more balanced, more mature kind of character and therefore deserving of the love and affection of a woman such as Carol and deserving to worthy of a long-term relationship, the marriage at the end of the movie. In all of these movies, you have this representation of the connection between the inside and the outside, the inside of the car the outside of the car, the inside of the characters, their spirit, their mind, the outside, their public persona. And the way this is represented usually is by showing the characters working on the car and while they're working on the car, they're working on themselves because this provides a transition. Once they're done with the car, something else has happened inside of them. You see that in Arnie and we'll see more of that now. We've seen it with Charlie a lot. It's this, this theme, this uh, visual transition is less apparent in Herbie, although you do have a substantial scene 
uh, where Tennessee and Carol are fixing Herbie after Herbie has been fed, uh, after Thorndike put in the tank of Herbie Irish coffee and uh, large amounts of uh, whipping cream. And that represents a point where Tennessee manages to convince Carol that Herbie is alive, so it, it is a, a relevant transition. Of course, you have the theme in all these movies of finding your place in society, your voice, meaning that you can finally be heard by people. You're not just talking, but people are paying attention to you within your social context, the family, the community could be the school, and this is true of Arnie, it's very true of Charlie. To a degree, you can find that aspect with Jim as well and his group. In all of these movies, you have the idea that there is a garage or a junkyard where pieces, spare parts are taken to fix the car, which also represents a safe space for the character away from a group, whether it be the family, the school, or the world in general, uh, that is not really supportive of them, their ambitions, their uh, dreams. And you find that with Arnie and uh, the, the garage where the car is fixed, Charlie, and, and of course there is quite a different, but in both instances you find this old guy, right, the secondary character of the old guy in charge of the garage and the junkyard, in one case is kind of a creepy guy, in the other case is a grandfatherly figure. And then in Herbie you have uh, the house, which is also a garage of Jim and Tennessee where some scenes take place. In all of these movies you find that the radio of the car becomes the mechanical voice of the car, right? A substitute for the voice of humans. So we see that in Christine's radio, Bumblebee's radio. In the case of Herbie, that aspect is not employed and you just have the horn of Herbie, which uh, in, in some passages communicates emotions felt by the car, right? Sadness or happiness, uh, etc. And that was it. So. We're going to proceed with the film. Let me just adjust the lights. And in here at the end of this scene, which I uh, partially skipped, you find Dennis, Arnie's uh, um, best friend, trying to approach Lee. However, soon enough, Lee will become Arne's uh, girlfriend simply because Arne becomes, all of a sudden, the coolest guy in the school. By the end of the movie, things will be restored to normalcy and therefore Lee, who will once again be the friend and possibly the girlfriend of Dennis. And of course, the bullies, one by one, will be punished by the car on behalf of both at this point, right? And I'm going to jump to the conclusion. This is Dennis and Lee trying to set up a trap to stop Christine. <laughs> 